Hi guys, let's talk about electronics laboratory. Are you thinking or wondering to set up an electronics laboratory? What, what do I need? What kind of equipment, room, area, table, and the capacity of the equipment? I wonder those questions myself when I was younger. I'm talking about the beginning of the 80s. And um, now, through the past of the years, I can answer that those questions and probably help you with that. If you are a student and you are thinking about electronics laboratory, I will tell you about my experience. I was younger and I was uh, surrounded by old guys, retired already, with big rooms full of equipment, 60, 70, measurement equipment on it, uh, brands like Textronics and stuff like that. And I wonder myself, how can I get that? Uh, I wish it to have. I was just starting. Later, I learned it in my life. If you are a student, you need digital multimeter, two of them, because sometimes you have to make the measurement of the voltage and the current too or the voltage in two different areas. You will need a power supply. I recommend two variable power supplies, two fixed power supplies as minimum. That's something that you can make yourself and learn from it. Kitchen table is your workbench to start with, and or any old desk is enough. Probably you're going to make some damage in the surface when you're learning. Uh, oscilloscope, yes, probably yes. Uh, don't spend too much money in a big oscilloscope if you don't need it now. You can save money from the budget and with that budget you can buy uh, one other things. You will need uh, some kind of a signal source, function generator or some kind of radio frequency generator or something. As I said, you can build yourself. You will learn from that. Who is the main character there? Probably the kitchen table and the books. Yep. Uh, try to get electronic components from used things, uh, broken TVs, uh, equipment nobody's using, rescue some transformers, uh, transistors, uh, capacitors from there. There are many things you can get because the electronic components means a lot of budget. The capacity of the oscilloscope, as I recommend in this case, you don't need a very high quality oscilloscope. I show it in my other videos. I had an electronics uh, service uh, for many years and I work it with a low capacity oscilloscopes and it's good enough for what I needed. So think about it. I will give an advice to all of you. Electronics is something to get money from if it is a business, not to put money in. You're not going to make an investment bigger than the money you're going to make as profile. So to make that income, to make that a profit, think in the balance, how much to put and how much to get. If you tell me, I want an electronics laboratory because this is my hobby. Okay, spend all the money you can, buy the best oscilloscope you can, uh, wait for the next in the market and buy it if you can too. Why? We live only once, that's to enjoy. But for business, keep it as a business. If you're going to set up an electronics laboratory for service, workshop, okay, you have to wonder yourself what kind of service are you going to work to? As example, tablet, telephones repairing, you need a small table, small desk is enough. Uh, very specific tools for that, yes. If you're going to repair TVs, okay, you need a dinner table probably for that. Uh, in service, in workshop, the tools are the main character. Uh, for students, 
as I said, the books are the main characters. Workshops is the tools. And the capacity of the equipment is limited by what you are going to do. If you are going to fix electronics for house, as example, a soldering iron, um, a TV, they have electronics uh, controls. You don't need four channels, 450 megahertz oscilloscope for that. It's too much. You will never reach that the limit in your business. If you're going to work in one specific area, because there are two kinds of service. One, general electronics, you don't know what is the next thing is going to pass through your door. One specific, I work only with this kind of uh, equipment. Example, uh, variable controls for motors, DC, AC, uh, the torque, speed, stuff like that. Uh, automobile, the electronic control unit, the AQ. Uh, you will need a test panel, a uh, bank of tests. You will need to put there uh, lots, you will have to put uh, frequency meters, you will have to put uh, lights, uh, interruptors, uh, conversions, uh, sensors, and the main character there is the test panel, the, the bank of uh, tests. And your table is going to be a workbench, probably. If you're going to design in electronics because you are an engineer, the main character is your computer, not the electronics laboratory itself, unless you want to make some tests yourself. But in that case, what you need is a computer, a good program, a lot of professional connections, and the computer is the star. In my other electronics laboratory, I have three tables. One, I remove the covers, I clean the doors, I take the things apart. Second, I do the rework, solder, hot air, soldering iron. The third table is a clean area, oscilloscope, uh, digital multimeter, testing, put it together in the first table, and it's done. In this other electronics laboratory, it's just for designing, so I have the minimum I need. Here, the main character is the computer. The equipment is just to make some tests myself. So, I answered your question, I hope, and uh, let's take a tour. At least, what do I need for one electronics laboratory? Believe it or not, everything starts with a table, a lamp, who is going to be one of your main tools, and a computer. After that, step by step, everything will be added for a good electronics laboratory. Number one, let's go here first. You will need a digital multimeter. I recommend two. Also, there is the manual range and the auto range. I recommend to get an auto range digital multimeter because if you are preparing someday, not a student, you will go you are going to be a professional you don't want to be scale up scale down on your digital multimeter uh, trying to reach the voltage here the voltage there the value of this resistor the value of next resistor so with the outer range all those steps and time losing are gone you will need two of them because with one you have to make measurements of voltage in one area and another or current and voltage or triggering something with one voltmeter and with the ohmmeter or diode test checking on the other side what you are doing variable power supply fixed power supply i recommend to get a laptop universal power supply this is a very good idea 
because they are multiple range. Here I have 5, 12, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24 volts. You will need a soldering station. I recommend you to make the investment because nowadays it's not like before that you were okay with the soldering iron. Now you need all kind of uh, tips and you will need the hot air for the new surface mount technology. So try to get one of those. There are many brands, many good brands and you will need it. By sure you will need it. Solder, there are different kinds. Solder, soccer. And I will give you advice, try to get the metal ones. It's not because they are the best, it's because some more of the components, they are a uh, static uh, electricity, static heat uh, sensitive. So you don't want uh, to make a discharge with plastics. With the metal, you have the chance to take the static electricity from the surface and put it in your body and through the ground system or the a mat on your table to dissipate that discharge. Yes, students, no students, whoever will sooner or later need one of those. Get a prepper. Uh, there are some kind of adapters too for either DC power supply like this or to fit from the USB port. So that's an extra power supply with 3.3 volts and 5 volts regulators. Nowadays you will need, yes, one of those. These things everybody's talking about. Try to get some Arduinos, accessories for Arduinos, and try to update yourself and learning with microcontroller technology. Tools, oof. Yes, you will need. There are just a few ones. Uh, you will need a diagonal strong cutter, but also uh, every professional will, will tell you get a flat one and take good care of it because after the solder you will make the cutting with this one. So we want a flat good cut on it. The nozzle pillars uh, there are two kinds one of them they have some kind of a traction let's see if I can get it a little bit more refuses I am the one who has to go away okay do you see so it will help you to hold things another of them they are flat Okay, this was with the these two. If I can focus those cameras they are hard to focus with. Okay, there you go. Full of solder by the way. This is a uh, bended, but it's very important. The other is straight. And this is the flat one. The flat one with the through hole technology in chips, sometimes we bend the, the chip, or we need to straight up the through hole the lead, and we use this kind of a flat surface to straight them up. They have not these. In representation of all the screwdrivers you will need to get, I just added four here. You will have to get a set of screwdrivers. Uh, remember guys, try to get the ones with the tip hard. They will rate years on you. Some extra tools, accessories, uh, scissors, cutters, 
adjusters, there are plastics and metals, you will need adjusters. Nail shaper is a wonderful tool, you will find out why very soon. I use uh, wood when I have to clean the electronic board when there is humidity. I clean it with this and not with a metal. Here, the oscilloscope. It's just 50 megahertz, two channels. This is the function generator I use here. It's kind of toy, but it's enough for what I need. To make tester, testing of uh, some components I'm using with to identify them, I use this kind of toy. It's good enough for what I need. So what you see here, guys, is just low budget. You don't need big budget. Did I speak about books? Okay, here I have all my books, my notes and everything. It's just 16 gigabytes. And it's the top secret of everything. And do not forget to get all the electronics component you will need for your projects, spare parts, or for any development as students or professionals. This is the most basic electronics laboratory. And everything is in 1 meter 80 times 1 meter 80 space about six foot I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching